The ID3 will change the way you think about Volkswagen, and the brand hopes it'll change the way you think about affordable electric cars. This contender is priced, shaped and designed right for the heart of the family segment of the growing EV sector. And unlike previous battery-powered Volkswagens, it's completely new from the ground up. It's small enough for the city and it's big enough for the family. Plus, it's as affordable as a comparable petrol or diesel model and it's clever enough to make a conventional family hatchback seem hopelessly outdated. The future has arrived. So far, there have been two eras in Volkswagen's history, the first post-war period of the Beetle and the second modern era dominated by the company's best-selling model, the Golf. The third period starts now with this car, the ID3, the first of many products from the Wolfsburg maker's new ID all-electric sub-brand. We've had all-electric Volkswagens before, of course, the e-Golf and the e-Up, but they've been based on the underpinnings of ordinary combustion engine models. The ID range will be very different, created around a purpose-designed MEB electrified platform and built at a bespoke EV factory in Zwickau near Dresden. Ten new ID series designs are to be manufactured at that facility and they'll be launched between now and 2025, including an SUV, a seven-seater, a luxury saloon, a coupe and commercial vehicles. The first offering though is this ID3, a golf-sized hatch with a city car style turning circle and Passat-sized interior space, incorporating technology that aims to make you think again if you haven't yet considered a switch to electric motoring. So this car is an automotive statement and also a political one. The Volkswagen Group is gradually rehabilitating itself into the eco part of the global business community after the stigma of the Dieselgate scandal. The EV model range that this car will sire has allowed the Wolfsburg conglomerate to commit itself to the goals of the Paris Agreement, the 200 nation accord which aims to limit global warming to 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit by cutting emissions of carbon dioxide and other pollutants. That's why the ID3 is made using a carbon neutral production process at a factory which relies entirely on renewable energy. As you can imagine, designing this car wasn't easy. Even now, at the time of this test in spring 2021, it's not completely finished. Persistent software problems have forced Volkswagen to launch the ID3 in mid-2020 without some of its media features. These are due to be restored to early owners with a subsequent software update. But then, era-defining designs are always challenging to create. Is this what this model is? Is it really the electric people's car, the true Beetle and Golf descendant? Well, here in the industry's most comprehensive test film, we're gonna find out. So here we are in Volkswagen's new era, one that's supposed to bring all our electrified automotive futures another step closer. But what kind of future will that be? Early EVs weren't very promising for those viewing driving as something a little more than merely getting from A to B. They felt very much like domestic appliances and quite a few still do. Is this one different? Well, it's certainly not like the kind of car you might be used to. There's no handbrake, there's no gear stick and there's no ignition key but this is a new era, right? It's supposed to be different. So seatbelt on, having registered the fact that you're sitting quite high, all those battery cells reside beneath the floor. You press a starter button on the steering column and that's to the acknowledgement of some distant whirring noises. And then you twist the gear selector for the single speed automatic transmission. That's an appendage that protrudes here to the right hand side of the instrument binnacle. It operates in two directions, uh, forwards to select D for drive or B for altering brake energy regeneration and backwards to select either neutral or reverse. Uh, that absent handbrake is replaced by just a button for park and you'll need to engage that at your destination. Set off and it releases automatically. 
and you're set off rather abruptly unless you have a very light right foot. Uh, unlike some rivals, say Citroen's EC4 or Mazda's MX-30, uh, this isn't one of those EVs with more combustion-like linear levels of easy acceleration. Instead, as with all um, the early EVs, its forward thrust all arrives in a rush, which is a bit pointless and it's rather unhelpful in terms of range preservation too. But it certainly makes this Volkswagen feel sporty. Or it would do if all that forward thrust was accompanied by something more than just a rush of air past the streamlined glass. Uh, and it will be actually under 12 miles an hour when, as now mandated by EU law, uh, this EV emits a strange E sound to warn pedestrians of your impending approach. It's a pity it has to sound so weird though. Uh, Fiat got film composer and director Nina Rota to do the E sound for their electric 500 model. Fripperies of that sort though aren't very Volkswagen and this car, like its brand, takes itself very seriously indeed as a glance around this minimalist cabin will confirm. Anyway, the stuff that you initially need to know is based around the mix and match combination uh, that you select from the three battery sizes on offer and from the two electric motor outputs you have to choose from. It's not like engine capacities where the bigger ones go faster. Obviously in the EV world, the larger the battery, the more weight you have to cart around. Uh, that explains why the eight second rest to 62 sprint figure of the base 45 kilowatt hour pure variant with a range of just over 200 miles is basically the same as that of the flagship 77 kilowatt hour tour version, which has a range of up to 336 miles. That top variant makes up its kilo deficit by using the faster 204 PS Pro Performance electric motor. The base pure derivative has that motor in lesser 145 PS Pro form. The ID3 that Volkswagen thinks you'll almost certainly want though is uh, sitting between those two extreme variants and it'll feature the mid-sized 58 kilowatt hour battery that's fitted to the car we're trying here which offers a range of up to 263 miles. At this level in the lineup you're offered the choice of either the Pro or the Pro Performance electric motor. The latter, which is fitted here, improves the rest of 62 sprint time from 9.6 seconds to a Golf GTI like 7.3 seconds. As usual with an EV, the car gradually runs out of puff after that, finally limiting itself to the kind of twin-digit top speed, in this case 99 miles an hour, that puts you in mind of a 70s hatch of this kind. Something perhaps like an original Beetle, which is a model that Volkswagen keeps referencing in its ID3 marketing, because this car, like that post-war design, is rear-driven. It's a format that's mandatory here. The ID3 will always use a rear-driven single-motor layout because the twin-motor four-wheel drive powertrain, which is offered in top versions of full electric Volkswagen Group crossover EVs like the ID4, won't fit. The rear-driven formula is one that the Wolfsburg engineers have been wanting to revert to for some time. Original prototypes of the Up City car were rear-driven before that format was rejected on grounds of cost. And when you drive an ID3 in town, you quickly realize the real advantages of placing the powertrain out back and freeing up the front wheels for steering duties. The turning circle is a London taxi-like 10.2 uh, meters, and that's better than the tiny the up model and the car is superbly maneuverable. It jinks through traffic holdups and darts into spaces. The rear driven format also benefits this Volkswagen beyond the city limits. It allows a perfect 50-50 weight distribution which uh, together with the low center of gravity that's provided by that central battery pack placement helps disguise the portly weight this ID3 has to carry around. Most variants of this family hatch tip the scales at about the level of a bigger mid-sized SUV, so think around 1.8 tonnes. Traction through the turns is excellent though, and body roll is checked by firm damping that's been cleverly engineered for suppleness over poor surfaces, although bigger potholes and speed humps and more extreme cases of broken bitumen will catch it out unless you've paid extra for the models with adaptive damping. All of which ought to provide the recipe for a decently sporting EV, and it would were it not for the steering, which has been clinically anaesthetized. I mean, it is direct and it weights up nicely with speed, but it has little interest in handling communication, even when you select sport, and that's the most dynamic of the three main drive mode settings. The others are eco and comfort. 
Plus there is also an individual menu via which you can select your own parameters. Uh, what it all means is that driving satisfaction has to come in more sensible ways, perhaps by rotating the gear selector forward to engage a battery mode which summons a regenerative braking function. Uh, the effect of this is a bit like the one pedal feature you get on a rival Nissan Leaf and it causes a car to automatically slow so much off throttle that there's hardly ever any need to use the brake pedal at which point you notice that the mix of regenerative and friction braking is well judged and that's despite the fact that curiously for such a futuristic car the rear wheels have old-fashioned brake drums rather than discs at higher speeds, when you're dispensed with the regenerative harvesting, you'll notice wind and tyre noise, but only because there's no engine note to mask them. You might, like us, rather regret the way that technology has dispensed with the need for all that, but it's hard not to be impressed by the sophisticated drive systems which marching progress has brought with it. This Volkswagen's optional travel assist setup, for example, this system largely takes over acceleration and braking from the driver at any speed and it also helps keep this ID3 in its lane with appropriate steering interventions. In conjunction with adaptive cruise control it always keeps the right distance to the vehicle in front of you and it has an eco assistance feature which uses GPS mapping data to automatically slow the car as it enters built up areas. If this sort of thing suggests the beginning of the end of driving as we know it, then cars like this ID3 are ready and waiting to ease us into that brave new world. With a note of reassurance, it will be better, cleaner and safer, and perhaps even more satisfying than we might think. In advertising its best-selling family hatch, Volkswagen used to tell us that it wasn't enough for a car to be merely like a Golf. Well, this one's like a Golf, albeit slightly wider, slightly taller, but not quite as long. Plus, it sits in the same size segment, doing basically the same job. And Wolfsburg wants you to buy it. It needs you to buy it, actually, if the Volkswagen Group's sales goals are to be realised. Once production of this model and its Audi, Skoda and Cupra cousins is in full swing, the conglomerate aims to sell 3 million EVs a year by 2025, which means that before long, this will be a common car on our roads. So what kind of design is it? Well, let's take a look. A one box shape built around its passengers with uncommonly short overhangs and the axles moved well apart to create a wheelbase almost as long as a Passat. There's a strong C-pillar, a classic Volkswagen design feature, which on the driver's side houses a charging flap and a softly modelled side section that curves under the rising shoulder line of quite a sporty silhouette, which features a low glass house emphasised by dark finishing for the roof, the window frames and the B-pillar. Uh, the wheels are also aerodynamically optimised and they're large, measuring up to 20 inches. We've got the 19-inch Andoya rims here. But what's really important is what you can't see. All the key drive stuff sits over the rear axle, principally the single speed gearbox and the permanent magnet synchronous electric motor which has been mated to it. Now this is powered by a high voltage battery and that has been efficiently packaged in the underbody to save space which leaves nothing to sit here at the front end but a few auxiliary units like the air conditioning compressor and of course the steering rack. So just as with the original rear engine Beetle, there's no need for a grill. We are a brand that was born without a grill, says design chief Klaus Zikura, uh, which means that the brand badge has to sit simply on this narrow light strip which rather neatly illuminates when these large headlights are on full beam. Uh, these headlights are of the full LED sort of course and the main beams are surrounded by fiber optic cables which radiate daytime running light. As an option you can have the clever IQ light intelligent matrix technology which features here uh, with its electrically operating modules and across the range the science of aerodynamics is optimized in every possible way. Uh, forward air either swept more effectively over the windscreen by this black panel uh, at the end of the bonnet or to cool the drive units it's channeled through this lower bumper intake and this sits below a pattern of honeycomb dentations, which are supposedly inspired by nature. 
Whatever your chosen colour, dark shades dominate at the rear. Uh, the black finish of this large roof spoiler extends down into a central tailgate panel with the brand and model badging. This is intended to emphasise the width and sure enough this ID3 is 20 millimetres wider than a Golf and it links uh, LED tail lamp clusters with sequential indicators and brake lights designed to illuminate in a conspicuous X motif. Lower down are pronounced contours while corner reflectors and this dark diffuser, untroubled of course by tailpipes, rounds things off at the bottom. Under it all sits the car's sophisticated MEB platform. Uh, development of that has taken the lion's share of the 54 billion pounds that Volkswagen has spent in developing its new era EV technology. Uh, this chassis would of course be shared with all other VW Group brands. It already features in close group rivals like the Skoda Enyaq IV and the Cupra L Born, and it'll be used in the smallest Audi e-tron hatch plus it will also be licensed out to Ford, with the result that there could be up to 20 million cars running on these same underpinnings by 2029. Enough with outside, what will the car that Volkswagen describes as your new personal companion be like to live with in the cabin? Well, if you have those intelligent ID light matrix headlamps fitted, it'll certainly make a good impression on first acquaintance because thanks to the swiveling modules, which I mentioned earlier, uh, the beam pupils look up, they light up and greet you as you approach. If you've avoided cheap trim levels, then there'll be no need for a key or a fob. And inside there's no need for a gear lever, an ignition slot or a handbrake either, which is just the beginning of the things you'll have to adjust to. As you enter this wide, narrow light strip beneath the windscreen, the ID light will indicate the car's readiness to drive. You sit quite high on top of all those batteries and the interior design has a minimalist and open plan but rather clinical feel which Volkswagen has tried unsuccessfully to lift by imprinting play and pause symbols on the two footwell pedals. Um, everything is electric of course, including the static you get from the man-made seat fabric. And just as in a rival BMW i3, the gear selector is housed in a right-hand protrusion from the instrument binnacle. Although here there's the additional novelty in the fact that the whole binnacle moves up and down as you adjust the wheel. Uh, other adjustments are done using either touch sensitive buttons like the fiddly sliders for the climate system or with voice control prefaced by the command hello ID. As in a Golf, we've found this voice system to be a bit hit and miss, particularly with noisy kids in the car. It struggles with postcodes and there are plenty of things that for the time being, until Volkswagen gets around to a software update, it simply can't do, uh, adjusting drive modes for example. Once you do master the ID parlance though, talking to your ID3 in this way should become second nature. It'll allow you to do things like adjust the temperature, uh, play your favourite song, make or receive a call or give directions. These last two functions are also assisted by colour coordinated flashes from that ID light strip which also displays in green when the car's charging and flashes red if the front assist sensors indicate a need for you to brake. It's all a generational step away from the kind of cabin technology you'll get on a rival Nissan Leaf and Kia e-Niro EV model, uh, something further emphasised by the screen tech on offer. You actually get more screen acreage of monitor in a Golf than an ID3, but of course TFD displays dominate here with a little 5.3 inch one behind the steering wheel and a main tablet of 10 inches in the centre of the dash. We'll start with this bisected binnacle monitor. It has a digital speedo in the centre above a battery charge graphic. A swipe on the steering wheel view button allows you to customise what you view either side of the speed readout, usually drive assistance features on the left and navigation instructions on the right. As is the norm these days, the accompanying centre stack capacitive touchscreen angled towards the driver has inhaled most of these secondary controls. Too many of them really. Like most reviewers, for safety's sake, we think that ventilation switchgear needs to be separated out into bespoke buttons. Uh, this Discover Navigation Pro system provided plenty of headaches in development to the point where the car had to be launched without key functions like smartphone mirroring. But the system's capacity for over-the-air updates 
meant that the brand could subsequently add in key elements like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto afterwards. Uh, these, along with the usual navigation, DAB Plus radio, Bluetooth and car informational features, share screen space and super sharp graphics with the various EV menu items you'll need. A charge screen is accessed in the car section, a locations tab points you to your nearest charging station and a data section offers selectable since start, long time and since charge options. We mentioned the airy interior feel earlier, it's fashioned around the design theme of open space. This is helped by the absence of a transmission tunnel and that makes the footwells bigger and it would have allowed for a walk across front cabin had not the designers decided to fill in this central space with this rather ugly centre console which for some odd reason doesn't quite connect with the centre stack. Build quality from the Zwickau factory in Saxony is up to the high standard we expect from Volkswagen. Unfortunately though some of the materials used are not. Uh, the brand has tried unsuccessfully to distract attention from that with this slush molded dash top panel that features colour customizable trimming extending into the doors. Uh, it's difficult to avoid noticing the hard plastics that feature elsewhere though. It's the sort of thing that would be just about acceptable further down the range but which feels hard to accept at the premium prices that the brand wants to charge for plusher variants like this one. Now we get that EV technology is expensive and that sacrifices have to be made to keep the asking prices affordable, but you do wonder whether it's really necessary for the penny pinching to be quite so obvious. A Golf costing 20% less has far more of a premium feel and it wouldn't do Volkswagen any favours to have customers jumping into an ID3 straight after testing a BMW i3. At least it leaves an open goal for the Audi version of this design. Some of the other cabin issues smack a little of cost cutting too. The important volume and temperature controls at the bottom of the central screen don't illuminate at night, uh, nor does the inside of the glove box. Uh, some of the central screen functions lag. Uh, the switches too for the rear windows and the door mirrors are needlessly fiddly. Touch sensitive fascia and steering wheel buttons, well they aren't exactly our favourite element of modern cabin design and these ones don't tend to respond with much conviction. Now that means that you sometimes find uh, that you're turning things back off again because you've pressed the button twice and you thought that it hasn't registered the first time around. But there's plenty we really like too. The ID light strip will be a real passenger talking point and there are lovely touches like dimmable overhead lights and a standard multicolour ambient lighting system which bathes the cabin in soothing shades after dark. Uh, the standard heated steering wheel is adjustable for rake and reach and the front seats are heated too. These chairs offer reasonable comfort and they include an armrest, although it's a bit disappointing that they don't have lumbar support unless you splash out on the ritziest trim levels. As an option you can have a clever augmented reality head-up display, another feature not quite completed in time for launch, which projects a three-dimensional staggered image at an apparent distance of around three to ten meters in front of the vehicle. The slim A-pillars, the large windows and the front screen not only make this Volkswagen easy to see out of, they also make the ID3 feel significantly more spacious than a Golf. Uh, with easy room for six footers, there's certainly more leg and headspace than you'll get on rival Nissan Leaf, and more storage capacity too. Much of that is in this lower central console, which has a roller blind uh, covering various cubbies with USB C ports, an adjustable divider, the usual cup holders, and an illuminated smartphone storage compartment. An overhead sunglasses compartment has been forgotten, but the glove box is reasonably sized, as are the door bins, and there's a netted storage pocket on the bulkhead. Finally, if you don't like all this grey trimming and you don't mind your ID3's cabin looking rather self-consciously funky, uh, then most trim levels offer you the no-cost option of changing the colour of this fascia decor strip. It's here finished in dusty grey, but you can change it either to white or if you really don't care what other people think, uh, then bright saffrano orange. Right. Time to take a look out back. Now, despite the fact that this ID3 is shorter than both the comparable Golf and its Nissan Leaf arch rival, we had quite high hopes here. Because the axles of this design have been moved so far apart, the wheelbase here is actually the same virtually as that of a Volkswagen Passat in the next class up.
And sure enough, once inside, there's a lot more space than the compact outward dimensions might suggest. It's a wider cabin than that of a Golf or a Leaf, and with no central transmission tunnel to obstruct things, three adults could fit more easily into the back of this car than just about any compact hatch we can think of. So yes, the ID3 is a full five-seater provided the adults in question don't have particularly long legs. I mean, there's not a lot of knee room going spare. A Leaf offers a little more space to stretch out, but it has a lower ceiling and, as we've said, less elbow space too. This bench doesn't slide or recline. It's not expected in this class, but it is the kind of functionality that you would get from the rear seat of a similarly priced SUV. Uh, but there is a reasonable amount of storage provision back here, including compact door bins, along with map pockets and pockets for mobile phones. Uh, they're both stitched into the backs of the front seats. There are twin USB-C ports too, and coat hooks in the grab handles. If you want more of an airy feel back here, then go for a trim level or a trim pack that'll give you the optional panoramic glass roof, which with a length of 130 centimeters and a width of 111 centimeters is exceptionally big and comes with an electric blind that's operated by voice control. Let's finish with a look at the boot, which at 385 litres is about the same size as a Golf, despite the presence of an electric motor under the floor here. The trunk space on offer though is 50 litres less than you get in an Nissan Leaf. All those Passat references had led us to expect a little more, but a child buggy or a couple of reasonably sized suitcases should easily fit. Uh, there are six body colored tie down points. There's a bag hook on each side, a bright LED light on the left and 12 volt socket on the right. Most trim levels offer a ski hatch, so longer items can be poked through into the cabin. Uh, avoid the cheaper trim levels and you'll get the adjustable height boot floor, which reduces the load lip height and beneath which you can stow away the charging cables, only one of which for your wall box and public charging is supplied as standard. Appallingly, on an EV of this price, you'll have to pay extra for one that you'll occasionally need with a three-pin socket. Uh, there's no room under there for a spare wheel, just space for the first aid kit. The other advantage of that feature is it gives you a completely flat cargo area when you lower the 60-40 split rear bench, and that frees up 1,267 litres of capacity. Choosing an ID3 can initially seem likely to be a complicated process with all the various battery sizes, electric motor outputs, charging issues, trim options and possible accessories. Although Volkswagen has done its best to try to simplify the process, uh, we're going to try to simplify it even more. All variants use the same single speed automatic transmission and all support the main charging options which will be available to you. 7.2 kilowatt one phase or 11 kilowatt three phase AC and 100 kilowatt DC charging. There's only this five door body shape, but Volkswagen has developed a whole range of EVs with the same chassis and drivetrain. Uh, the closest relative to the ID3 is the ID4 compact SUV. As for the ID3 model range, well, basically there's an entry level pure variant. Now that has the smallest possible 45 kilowatt hour battery, and that offers a range of just over 200 miles, and the smallest 145 PS electric motor. Price-wise, if you think in the region of around £28,000 for that, after subtraction of the £2,500 government plug-in car grant, then you won't be too far out. At uh, the other end of the range uh, sits the top ID3 Tour Pro S flagship model. That has the largest possible 77 kilowatt hour battery. That offers a range of up to 336 miles and the most powerful 204 PS electric motor. One of those you're going to need well over £42,000. Which brings us on to the part that you really need to know about. Almost everyone choosing this car is going to be ignoring those two extreme variants and opting instead for one in between, a model with the mid-sized 58 kilowatt hour battery, think up to 263 miles, which is what we have here. That's why Volkswagen offers models with this battery size in a bewildering number of flavors, which 
At the time this test in spring 2021, we're all sitting in the 29,000 to 41,000 pound bracket. Uh, because of the fact that these days the government plug-in car grant doesn't apply to EVs costing more than £35,000, the cheaper models lower down the range benefit from that £2,500 government contribution, but the mid and upper spec variants have to do without it. Still with us, because if you want to buy or lease an ID3, this is where you need to pay attention. There are six trim options open to ID3 58 kilowatt hour customers, uh, starting with the most affordable life and business spec variants, which along with the 45 kilowatt hour pure model are the only ID3 derivatives that are cheap enough to qualify for that government grant. Uh, that explains the large price jump before you get into the family style tech and max trim levels, which complete the array of model choices available to an ID3 58 kilowatt hour Volkswagen customer. You'll have to consider your preferences uh, with regard to the car's power output too. The life, business and family versions, they are each offered with the choice of both electric motor sizes, variants with the smaller output, 145 PS units, a badged Pro, or for £1,320 more, you can swap that out for the larger 204 PS motor we're trying here and get yourself a Pro Performance version. The plusher Style Tech and Max variants come only with the more powerful Pro Performance motor. Got all that? Good, because we may be running a short quiz later. The six fixed and pre-configured trim levels we just mentioned are made up of five different equipment packages, comfort, infotainment, design, assistance, and sport. And there are two versions of each of those five packs, basic or plus. Now, obviously, more and better packs get thrown in as you ascend the range. And we're gonna brief you on what each trim level offers uh, when we get into specification. Initially, it might all sound a little complicated, but ultimately it is supposed to be simpler for the customer than having, say, five or six trim levels and then a long list of options. And it's certainly a lot easier for Volkswagen. I mean, this way, the factory in Zwickau can build and deliver the cars a lot faster. Before we get into the specifics of equipment, let's take a look at the value proposition here. So how does the ID3's EV proposition stack up against comparably sized combustion engine family Volkswagens that you could also get for similar money? Well, the obvious point of comparison here, of course, is with a Golf. Now, at the time of this test in spring 2021, uh, Volkswagen was asking around £26,500 for a base spec Life Golf with DSG auto transmission and either the 1.5 litre ETSI mild hybrid petrol engine or the 2 litre TDI 115 PS diesel. That's just over £2,500 less than the cost of a comparable LifeSpec ID3 with the mid-range 58 kilowatt hour battery and the standard 145 PS Pro electric motor. If you're looking at blowing over £42,000 on a top ID3 tour with the biggest 77 kilowatt hour battery and the uprated 204 PS motor, the gap to a comparable Golf widens. A Golf GTD 2 litre TDI 200 PS diesel is around £33,000, while a petrol GTE plug-in PHEV with 245 PS is around £36,000. But of course, you won't only be considering other Volkswagens in choosing this car. The range of compact EV family hatchbacks, which is available in the UK right now, has widened to the point where it would take longer than we have here to go through all the possible alternatives. Uh, so we are going to have to limit ourselves to the directly comparable ones. Uh, now, you will obviously pay less for a super mini sized EV, like say a Renault Zoe, a Peugeot E208, or a mini electric, and inevitably you'll pay a little more for a compact full battery SUV, like say a Hyundai Kona electric, a Nissan Ariya, or a Tesla Model Y. Uh, all those cars are more accurately targeted by the Volkswagen ID4 model that we mentioned at the beginning. In terms of what is directly comparable, well, the ID3 has its sights very firmly set on the current market leader, Nissan's Leaf, and it looks well placed to severely trouble that Japanese model. A base spec ID3 Pure with the 45 kilowatt hour battery and a range of just over 200 miles doesn't cost much more than a base spec Leaf with a 40 kilowatt hour battery and a meager 168 mile range. 
and an ID3 Life with the 58 kilowatt hour battery and a 263 mile range undercuts a Leaf E Plus with a 62 kilowatt hour battery and a 239 mile range by around 4,000 pounds. As for other options that you might be looking at, well, the Kia e Nero is a strong challenger. If you're looking at a mid-range ID3, the e Nero with the 64 kilowatt hour battery has a useful range of 282 miles, but it costs from around 34,000 pounds. So ultimately, you might well think that a cheaper 58 kilowatt hour ID3 would make more sense. That ID3 model would definitely make more sense than the e Nero in 39 kilowatt hour battery form. Now that costs around 30,000 pounds and it goes just 180 miles between charges. A similar 38.3 kilowatt hour Korean battery is used by the Hyundai Ioniq Electric, which costs around 31,000 and is quoted at only 182 miles between charges. As for other options, uh, well, we quite like the quirky Citroen EC4, which has the 50 kilowatt hour battery and goes 217 miles and costs from around 29,000 pounds. But you are more likely to be looking instead at the BMW i3, which has a 42.2 kilowatt hour battery, costs from around 33,000 pounds and goes 191 miles between charges. But that car does have a much smaller boot. After considering all these options, it's very possible that you might conclude that there's nothing quite like an ID3 in this segment, in which case you'll be wanting to know exactly how generous Volkswagen has been with an ID3 specification. So time to have a look at that now. So let's start with features that all ID3 models share. You get a charging cable, obviously, six meters in length and of the usual Mode 3 Type 2 32 amp variety. And to meet EU law, this car has an exterior e-sound feature which emits a futuristic noise at under 12 miles an hour to warn pedestrians of this Volkswagen's impending arrival. All ID3s also come with a black roof, full LED headlamps, LED taillights, rain sensing wipers, all round parking sensors and an alarm. Inside, all ID3s feature the ID light, a wide narrow light strip under the windscreen that assists the driver by flashing or moving in different colors to draw attention to various functions. Uh, there is also an air care climatronic air conditioning system and an ambient lighting setup with at least 10 color options. Uh, there is a lot of standard driving tech too, principally the ACC adaptive cruise control system. Now that incorporates predictive cruise control and it uses images from a windscreen camera along with navigation data to adjust the car's speed ahead of bends and speed restrictions. Plus, of course, ACC can do all the usual things. It can adapt your ID3 speed to the vehicles in front of you. And in the event of a tailback, it can bring the car to a controlled stop and start it off again without driver input. Another clever standard integrated feature is Car2X, a system which communicates wirelessly with other Car2X enabled vehicles using Wi-Fi technology so as to share information and to brief your ID3's electronic systems automatically on traffic updates. So for example, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, uh, the system will know before you do when the end of the jam is coming up and it'll get the adaptive cruise control ready to resume cruising speeds. And Car2X incorporates a hazard warning system which advises you of impending roadworks and accidents and emergency vehicles. It can even detect when other cars with the system are performing panic braking in front of you and in an emergency like that it'll turn on your own brake lights even before you've reacted and that'll help to avoid you being rear-ended. Plus, of course, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? Well, this one's called the We Connect ID app. And as usual with an EV, it's the sort of thing that can preheat or cool the car and set charging times. Plus, the app can help you find and use over 150,000 public charge points. And it works with a single charging card that you can use right across Europe, which includes access to Ionity's high-speed charging stations along major highways. Also included are online traffic information services and using the app, you can do things like remotely lock or unlock the car. You can flash its lights to help you find it in a car park. Uh, you can browse your ID3's service history and you can check whether the charging cable is connected. 
If it is, you can start or stop charging sessions from your sofa. Uh, to get going with all of this, you simply download the free application and then set up a user account and add your Volkswagen and then activate a WeConnect start contract, at which point the functions all become available for three years. Right, enough with general ID3 features. What about specific items for specific trim levels? Well, most customers will start at the foot of the 58 kilowatt hour model range with value orientated life trim, so we'll start there. With this, you get the Comfort Pack, which gives you Discover Navigation Pro Sat Nav, plus an auto dimming interior rear view mirror, power folding heated door mirrors with puddle lights, heat for the front seats and for the steering wheel, uh, rain sensing wipers, and two rear USB C connection ports. Also standard for live spec customers is the infotainment pack, which gives you a whole range of media features provided courtesy of a 10 inch central screen, which replicates some of its functions on the five inch monitor behind the steering wheel. Now the main screen can be accessed either by touch or via Hello ID natural voice control, and it features a DAB plus tuner, Bluetooth and Volkswagen's wireless app connect setup, which gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. So that's two of the trim packs that we mentioned earlier covered off and progressing further up the lineup means adding in various others. Now, if you're heading into the middle of the range uh, with specking up your 58 kilowatt hour ID3, you'll find that the next four trim levels, business, family, style and tech, they all have a ski hatch and style seats in smart flow art velour microfleece. Plus, all of them also feature the basic elements of the design pack. The main aspect of that is the IQ Light Matrix headlamp system with its jaunty welcoming sequence and its dynamic light assist intelligent cornering technology. Now, the design pack also includes rear tinted glass and illuminated front light band between the headlights and the brand logo, animated rear LED light clusters, and an extra 20 colors to choose from with the cabin ambient lighting system. Uh, with family, style, and tech ID3 models, you also get the panoramic glass roof that comes with Volkswagen's Design Pack Plus upgrade. Otherwise, your choice between the four mid-range 58 kilowatt hour ID3 models will basically come down to pack preferences. The family spec model is the only mid-range variant that has the Comfort Pack Plus package, and that'll be important to know if you prioritize having two zone climate control and a height adjustable boot floor in your ID3. If you would like a few technology features, then you'll want to know that the business and the family models have the assistance pack. Now that will give you keyless entry, rear view camera, illuminated door handles, and Volkswagen's proactive occupant protection. Uh, now that better safeguards you in a crash. The tech model upgrades itself to assistance pack plus status. Now that means it gets all the assistance pack items along with uh, side assist, blind spot monitor, uh, emergency assist. Now that cuts in if you're taken ill and also Volkswagen's clever travel assist setup, which at highway speeds can take over braking, throttle and some steering duties for you. Additionally, with tech spec, you'll also gain the extra features of Infotainment Pack Plus. Now that uh, is an augmented reality head-up display, wireless smartphone charging, and also Volkswagen Sound Pack 6 Plus 1 audio upgrade. But what if you can't be bothered with all the mixing and matching and you merely want the best specified 58 kilowatt hour ID3 that you can get? Well, that's easy. You just ask your dealer for the plushest Max version in which each of the four packs we've already mentioned, design, infotainment, comfort and assistance, come in fully loaded plus form. Now that will mean that you get every feature that we've mentioned so far, along with the two further ones, which make up Volkswagen's final sports pack, DCC dynamic chassis control, adaptive damping, and progressive steering. Now that sharpens corner turn in at speed and adds in extra assistance to make parking easier. Max spec also includes grippier Sport Plus front seats with lumbar support and a massage function. And its top 
plush level of spec is broadly duplicated by the kit list that features in the priciest ID3 variant that we mentioned earlier. That's the Tor model with the larger 77 kilowatt hour battery. And that's recognizable by these unique 19 inch and Doya alloy wheels. The only other differences between Max and Tor spec lie with the fact that the Tor model does without dynamic chassis control, progressive steering and a panoramic glass roof. And for reasons that are presumably related to the extra size of the battery, it can only seat two people on the back seat. Right, that's enough about standard spec. Having gone through all that and tried to clarify for you the complexity of what is supposed to be a simpler specification structure wasn't easy. We can't help thinking it would have been more straightforward all round if Volkswagen hadn't bothered with trim levels at all and had simply settled on a basic level of ID3 spec and then offered customers a free choice amongst those 10 specification packs. As it is, different packs can't be added into different trim levels and none of the pack features are available as individual options. And that seems a bit restrictive. There aren't many options you can have and there would be even fewer if, as it should have done, the brand had included carpet mats and the Mode 2 Type 2 230 volt one phase AC cable you'll need to attach the car to a domestic three pin socket, which of course you'll need for times when you have no access to a wall box or a public charger. You can also specify an energy efficient heat pump. Now that's supposed to increase the driving range by a third in cold weather. Otherwise, it's all about aesthetics. Now, if you don't want your ID3 in solid moonstone gray, uh, the rather drab single standard color, you'll be paying your dealer more either for one of the metallic shades, uh, like the Glacier White finish that we have here, or for one of the two pricey by color exterior styling shades, silver or penny copper. Uh, there is also a choice of 18, 19 or 20 inch alloy wheels. You can also give the exterior mirrors a carbon finish or you can opt for a style pack which coats them in gloss black and adds in mirror integrated turn signal lights. If you want to personalize the look of the cabin, you'll need to have avoided the non-negotiable interior finish which features with either base life spec or the two top Max and Tour trim levels. Uh, assuming you have done that, uh, your dealer will offer you the no cost options of different style and style plus interior color packs for the decor fascia strip that flows round into the doors. And we have that feature here in dusty gray, but had we wanted our ID3 cabin to stand out a bit, we could have chosen either white or vibrant saffrano orange. You can also pay extra for luxury textile floor mats. As for practical options, well, there are various protection packs which bundle together features like carpet mats, a load sill protector and a load liner, all of which can be ordered separately. Uh, ordering the load liner separately gives you the choice of having it in either flexible or semi-rigid form. If you want to carry bicycles, you'll need to specify the transport carrier hitch kit uh, for bikes, which comes as part of the optional travel pack. And that's together with a carrier that can take up to three bikes. A two bike carrier is also offered. Let's finish as we always do with a look at safety. You'd expect some sort of forward collision warning autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days. Uh, Volkswagen's is called front assist and as usual with these kinds of setups it scans the road ahead as you drive. Uh, now if a potential collision hazard is detected you'll be warned. If you don't respond to that or you aren't able to then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, as with the current Golf model, uh, this setup's city emergency braking system, that's been enhanced with what Volkswagen calls extended and proactive pedestrian protection. Uh, that is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be just about to inadvertently step out into your path. Every ID3 also gets a lane assist lane keeping system which warns you when you stray out of your lane and which applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. In addition, there is a driver alert feature which monitors your reactions for drowsiness and will, if necessary, 
prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. Uh, all of this is in addition to all the usual features which come fitted to every Volkswagen family model these days, which have together helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. There are twin front, side and curtain airbags, although disappointingly, you don't get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. Uh, there are, of course, Isofix child seat fastenings. They are on the rear bench. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that um, one of the features of the WeConnect ID app that we mentioned earlier is an emergency call equal SOS system, which in the event of an accident where the airbags have been deployed, will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus an ABS braking system that's further assisted by CBC cornering brake control through the bends. Uh, plus there is an HBA hydraulic braking assistant, which helps to reduce stopping times when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency. Plus all ID3s get a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Plus there's tyre pressure monitoring too. That's the extent of the safety kit you'll get on life and style variants, but as we mentioned earlier, further up the range, more camera safety items feature. Just to reiterate, with mid-range business and family spec models, you'll also get the assistance pack. Now that gives you proactive occupant protection. Uh, this uses sensors from the front assist setup to prepare the car to help you survive an impact if those sensors deem a collision is inevitable. Uh, that'll mean your belts will be instantly pre-tensioned and the windows and the sunroof, if fitted, will be immediately closed. And finally, with Tech, Max and Tour models, as we said, you'll also get the Assistance Plus pack that adds two more safety features, a side assist blind spot monitor to stop you from dangerously pulling out in front of other vehicles, and also emergency assist, and that's a setup that can take over driving duties completely if you become incapacitated, and it'll steer the car to the side of the road and bring it to a safe and gradual stop. It's all very reassuring. Lots of EVs we test have trendy design, clever technology and great drive dynamics, but they fail at the final crucial hurdle, that of driving range. With billions of euros riding on this model, Volkswagen couldn't afford to make that mistake. And as you'll already know, if you viewed our driving experience section, they haven't. The least expensive ID3 45 kilowatt hour model's WLTP rated base figure for around 200 miles is comfortably enough to see off the volume 40 kilowatt hour version of the Nissan Leaf at 168 miles, the 39 kilowatt hour version of the Kia e Nero at 180 miles, and the Hyundai Ioniq Electric, whose 38.3 kilowatt hour battery manages 182 miles. It will also beat the BMW i3, whose 42.2 kilowatt hour battery delivers 191 miles. Most customers, though, as we've said, will be wanting this Volkswagen in the 58 kilowatt hour form that we've been trying here, which has a range which, for simplicity in this test, we've been quoting in the way that Volkswagen does as up to 263 miles. Actually, that only applies to the lightest life spec model. With business trim, the figure is actually 262 miles. With style trim, it's 261. With family and tech spec, it's 260. And with top max trim, it's 250. In case you're wondering, the range isn't affected by your choice of electric motor output, pro or pro performance. Bottom line, well, there probably aren't many regular journeys that you're likely to do in this ID3 that it won't be able to cope with. So how do these figures stack up against the comparable competition? Well, again, very well. The larger battery 62 kilowatt hour E plus version of the Nissan Leaf manages 239 miles, while the Citroen EC4 with its 50 kilowatt hour battery manages only 217 miles. To do better, you have to pay quite a lot more. A Kia e Nero with a 64 kilowatt hour battery and a 282 mile range costs from around 34,000 pounds, while a Mercedes EQA with a 66 kilowatt hour battery and a 265 mile range costs from, uh, well, much more, from around 40,000 pounds. 
and that is the same sum that we get you an ID3 Tour model with a 77 kilowatt hour battery and a 336 mile range. The range will, as ever on an EV, be heavily influenced by things like extreme temperatures, uh, by gradients and the amount of weight that's being carried around. But of course, the major contributing factor will be driving style. You'll need to select this car's most frugal eco-drive mode to get anywhere near those figures, of course, which restricts throttle travel and air conditioner output. Uh, you'll also need to be frequently selecting the B regenerative braking setting provided by the gear selector. Now with this engaged, the electric motor functions as a generator and it feeds power back into the battery. And you'll experience quite an abrupt off-throttle retardation up to 0.3 G, claims Volkswagen. If you don't use the Eco and B settings regularly, then the range figure drops quite a bit, but that's true of all EVs. Uh, we've been averaging about 190 miles of range on this test, which we'd suggest will be pretty typical. Even here though, the car helps you out a bit. Uh, there's a standard Eco Assistance feature, and that draws on the navigation data and on road signs detected by the car's forward-facing camera, so that if your ID3 is approaching a bend or a town boundary, then the system can visually indicate that you should lift off the accelerator. Uh, this apparently simple yet complex calculation allows the car's drive system to perform optimum energy recuperation and thereby supports optimum range performance. In really cold weather, you can, in theory, improve the quoted figures, or at least preserve them, by specifying the optional energy-efficient heat pump that Volkswagen wants to charge you £1,250 more for. Checking out owners' forums, uh, for example, vwidtalk.com or id3forums.co.uk, uh, that reveals that this doesn't always happen in practice, though. Anyway, overall the range readings stack up and that's helped no doubt by the uber slippery drag coefficient figure of just 0.27 CD. What about the charging regime though? Has charge been mastered here? Well, all models support 7.2 kilowatt one phase and 11 kilowatt three phase AC charging and 100 kilowatt DC charging. For the 77 kilowatt hour model, Volkswagen's engineered in 125 kilowatt DC charging capability for the new generation of public rapid chargers that can't come soon enough for our market. For the time being though, with more regular models, you'll have to make the best use that you can of the provided WeCharge app that helps you find and use over 150,000 public charge points. If you're fortunate enough to find a DC3 100 kilowatt public rapid charger, replenishing your ID3 from 5 to 80% will take just 35 minutes. An ID3 Tour model with a larger 77 kilowatt hour battery connected to 125 kilowatt DC charging could gain a range of over 200 miles in just 30 minutes. For owners of more usual 58 kilowatt hour variants, it'll probably be enough to know that they can recharge the car at home overnight. And sure enough, the AC one phase 7.2 kilowatt garage wall box that most are likely to use would replenish the car from zero in nine hours, 30 minutes. If your property or your business can support an AC3 11 kilowatt charger, then that time will reduce to six hours, 15 minutes. The charging socket is located on the driver's side rear wing and a charge screen is accessed in the car section of the center dash screen. Uh, there a locations tab points you to your nearest charging station and a data section offers selectable since start, long time and since charge options. Or you can set the charging timer using the provided WeConnect ID app. Using this, you can charge at public points across Europe with just one charging card based on a WeCharge plan tailored to suit you. Plus, you'll get exclusive prices for using the Ionity high-speed charging network, although most of the rapid chargers for that are on the continent. As for home charging, which is what you'll be doing 80% of the time, well, if you're new to the whole EV thing, then you'll obviously have to invest in a garage wall box. Uh, Volkswagen has teamed up with Podpoint to offer their solo home charger, which will get you up and running. This can charge up to 10 times faster than a domestic three pin plug. It benefits from over the air software Wi-Fi updates to unlock new features. And it incorporates auto power balancing that lets the car charge in harmony with your home. Plus it can be paired with a PodPoint app to track charging costs and energy usage. And a three year on-site warranty is included.
If you want a more sophisticated home charger, then Volkswagen will sell you its own ID Charger Pro unit, and that can work with either single or three phase power supplies. It's available with 4.5 or 7.5 meter cables, and it has a billing grade meter plus extra features like dynamic load management, energy management, a DC fault current sensor, a remote access via the Volkswagen WeConnect app, and Wi-Fi Ethernet communication via LTE 4G connectivity, which isn't dependent on your home network. So once you've got your charging regime sorted out, what does it all boil down to in pounds, shillings and pence here? Well, uh, we reckon with a typical electricity tariff, you'd be paying around 4p per mile to run this EV, which is around 2.5 to six times cheaper than an equivalent car with either a petrol or a diesel engine. At the time of this test in spring 2021, a full charge, again on a typical electricity tariff, costs around five pounds 31 pence. Volkswagen reckons that a typical ID3 user will save about £730 a year in operating expenses over what they're paid to run a comparable combustion engine model. And independent tests have suggested that the cost of covering 12,000 miles in an ID3 solely charging from a 7.2 kilowatt home wall box would be about £490. In comparison, an average petrol powered family hatch would cost three to four times as much. What else? Well, you won't only be saving money on energy costs, driving into congestion charge zones will be free, and you should also make savings in insurance and road tax, and big savings in benefiting kind tax. Uh, like its competitors, the ID3 has a BIK rating of 0% across the range. Compare that to 26% for a Golf 2 litre TDI, 115 PS DSG diesel, or 28% for a Golf 1.5 litre ETSI DSG petrol mild hybrid. The 0% BIK rating is down, of course, to the fact that, like any EV, this one has a zero emissions CO2 figure. Although, of course, the energy to drive this car has to cause pollution somewhere. Uh, this Volkswagen has a well-to-wheels carbon contribution of 31.7 grams per kilometre and an efficiency rating of 4.57 miles per kilowatt, which is pretty good, but it's some way from being completely green. Residual values look promising. Independent experts quick car cost reckon that after three years and 20,000 miles, a typical ID3 58 kilowatt hour pro performance life model would still be worth 45.6% of its original value. That compares against 39.75% uh, for a rival Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour Tecna model and 36.34% for a comparable BMW i3. Insurance for the ID3 sits in either group 27 or 28, depending on variant, which for reasons that we can't quite work out, is the same as a Golf GTI. More relevantly, it's a group higher than volume versions of direct rivals like the Nissan Leaf and the Kia e-Niro. An ID3 driver will enjoy lower maintenance costs than would be the case with a combustion engine model. Uh, obviously no oil changes are needed and regenerative braking, that means that the brake pads are designed to last the life of the car. Uh, there's a fixed servicing schedule with a basic inspection after two years, unlimited mileage for that, and subsequent services every year or 20,000 miles. Volkswagen says that its aim is to make sure that the battery pack lasts as long as a car too, and sure enough, the battery pack is warranted to have at least 70% of its usable capacity after eight years or 100,000 miles. Rather refreshingly, by the way, the battery size figures that Volkswagen quotes for this car are net usable ones, and that's a more honest trend that was started by Tesla. Other brands tend to quote gross battery sizes and then put the net usable size in the small print. There's the usual unremarkable three year and 60,000 mile Volkswagen warranty. The third year is operated by the retailer and there's a 12 year body protection guarantee, a three year paint warranty and three years of Volkswagen assistance, which includes European breakdown cover. Uh, combustion Volkswagens only get a year. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, your green bearded friends might like to learn of the fact that this is a carbon neutral product and it's manufactured at Volkswagen's plant in Zwickau. That's the most efficient plant in Europe and it uses 100% green electricity. 
where the plant's emissions are unavoidable in things like transport and logistics, Volkswagen compensates by contributing to internationally recognised climate protection initiatives like forest protection projects in Borneo. So an Asian farmer's land might be forested as a result of your ID3's creation. That all sounds great until you consider the fact that with technology as it is at present, automotive EV batteries are going to end up in landfills at the end of their working lives, which is about as far from being green friendly as it's possible to get. Volkswagen, like other brands, is working hard to try to change this. It's building a pilot plant at Salzgitter, which either gives batteries a second life or uses them as a source of raw materials after recycling. You may already have decided that an electric family hatch is for you, but even if you haven't, this is one you need to consider. You'll like the clever packaging, the quick performance, the sharp maneuverability and the cutting edge cabin tech. You might even really like the quietly futuristic styling. The Wolfsburg brand really has been able to deliver a family sized EV at a sensible price that can claim to be directly comparable to combustion engine rivals but it's still not time to burn those golf badges just yet. The infrastructure for EV motoring in the UK at least isn't yet quite as complete and polished as it eventually will be. And that's a comment that also applies to this ID3. There were software problems before launch and in terms of the finished product, there are still some human interface issues in the cabin that you'll have to get used to. And some aspects of interior quality don't, in our view, quite equate to the price that Volkswagen wants to ask for better equipped variants like this car. But if your point of comparison is what's already on offer in the family hatch EV segment, uh, currently dominated by cars like Nissan's Leaf and Kia's e Nero, then the ID3 does look very good indeed. It feels a generation on from models like those, especially in its design and its manner of production. And although driving range does need to be improved throughout this car's production life, and it will be, what's an offer at present is very class competitive for right now. What's more, this really does feel like an authentic Volkswagen with a rear driven format that even has a few Beetle throwbacks. In half a century's time, there's just a chance that the ID3 will command a place in automotive history alongside that seminal VW model. As we said, the future starts here.